Hello, I am back. In this video, I am finally going to start to build the neural network architecture to make this color classifier. I am going to take this data over here, which is a long array of many, many RGB values normalized to a range zero to one, which matches with all of these one hot encoded labels. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you might want to go back and watch the first seven, yes, that's right, seven parts of this, uh, Tutorial series, it's getting very, very long. But this, I think, is I'm really getting to the, the, the good stuff. I don't know, maybe it was good stuff before, maybe this is bad stuff, I don't really know. But this, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm excited because now what I'm going to do, and I'm going to use TensorFlow.js, but I'm going to create the neural network architecture. So let's just remind ourselves what we have. We have uh, a data set. Most of the first seven videos of the series was all just about collecting and cleaning that data set. And that data set is, uh, many, many RGB values. I think I have like 5,000, which actually is kind of very, very small for a data set, but is fine for this particular demonstration. I have 5,000 RGB values. Each one is labeled with something like bluish or reddish or purplish. Um, these were crowdsourced, but those got converted to one hot encoded uh, vectors, meaning if there are nine, if there are nine labels, uh, well, let's see, can I, then I have a vector that looks like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, out of 10, nine, nine, and maybe this one refers to purplish. If this particular uh, element of this array of numbers has a one in it, um, it is that, that, and it, that one is for a particular label, this one's for another label. Okay, so that's what I have. So what I, I know that I need to have some kind of neural network and the inputs has, have a shape of three. There are three inputs, R, G, B. The outputs have a shape of nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the output layer that has a shape of nine. Inputs have a shape of three, outputs have a shape of nine, because the goal of this is if I, when, once this whole thing is trained and finished, if I send in some RGB values, what I'm gonna get is a bunch of numbers all between zero and one, and I'm gonna find the one that's the highest, and, and those numbers are gonna be the probability of this particular data point being a particular label, and I'm gonna find the one that's highest, and I'm gonna assign it that label. Whoo, classification, we're doing classification. So now what goes in between all this? Now this is a big question and many different scenarios might call for multiple layers, different kinds of layers. There's something called a convolutional layer, which I will get to eventually in a video someday. But I'm gonna do something really simple. I'm gonna have a basic dense layer, which is kind of the standard building block of neural network systems. And I'm gonna give it some number of nodes. So for the sake of argument right now, let's pretend that I just gave it four nodes. And a dense layer, and this output is also gonna be a dense layer. Dense layer means fully connected, meaning that every input is connected to every node. Uh, and then every node in the hidden layer, this dense layer, is connected to every output. Now I'm going to let your imagination draw the rest of all these connections, but so this is what I want to architect. So let's now go and architect this. Now I'm going to do this using tensorflow.js and the layers API. If you don't know about the layers API, you can go and watch my three or four part series about the layers API tutorial, but I'm not gonna sort of talk you through it while we're doing it here, so you don't necessarily have to watch that. Okay, so if I come back again, this is what I built so far. I have all of the training data in tensors, and you can see the shape of it. I have 5,643 RGB values and 5,643 labels nine, with nine possibilities. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is, and I'm gonna do some goofy stuff with some global variables that I might not, no, that, you know, just to make my life kind of easier, I'm going to create a, a variable called model. And my model, which I'm going to create in setup at the end after I've prepared all the data, I'm going to say model equals tf.sequential. Um, tf.sequential. So that now, that's, that's me creating a sequential neural network model. It's sequential because it's a feed forward. The layers go in this order. So now what I need to do is create some layers. So the first thing I want to do is make the hidden, let's make the output layer. 
Now let's make the, we should do it in order. We have to do it in order. I'm going to make the hidden layer. Hidden equals TF layers uh, dense. And then I put some configuration stuff. So I make a layer by calling tf.layers, and then I specify the kind of layer. This is going to be a dense layer. And then I can pass an object in as an argument, and that's where I can configure things like inputs. <laughs> so I don't remember any of this. Let's go look it up. <laughs> so let's go to the documentation. Let's go to tf, um, tf layers, and let's go to uh, dense. Where do we see that? Uh, sorry, I'm looking around for it and it's right there in front of my face under basic. So I'm going to make a TF layers dense. I'm going to click on that. And now I'm going to see these are all of the things that I can pass into the configuration. So I need to specify the number of units. The number of units is like the number of nodes. And I made up four right here. Maybe let's try 16. Maybe we want to have some more than four. Whatever, we can make up anything we want. Um, so I'm going to now say units 16. One thing that I know I need is an activation function. Again, I can't cover everything in this video. I have other videos where I've talked about what an activation function is and how it works. Um, but the idea is the activation function is the function that takes all the sum of all of the things passing through the network being multiplied by the weights and kind of squashes them into some range. And so there probably is a really useful, interesting discussion about we could have about what would be the best activation function to use right here and right now. Maybe later, we'll try some different ones. But just for simplicity, I'm going to use, I'm going to make a, a bad decision and just use sigmoid, the sort of like historically original activation function of, uh, of neural networks. So I'm going to use the activation function sigmoid. Let's see what else do I want. Input dimensions. So this is something that I definitely need to do here because remember this, 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 these inputs, this is not actually a layer. This is a two layer network. It looks like there's three, but I'm just drawing it with three things and the inputs being, but that's not a layer. But I do need to specify that three things are coming in. So I need to come here and say the uh, input dimensions. Input dimensions is uh, three because I have an RGB value. This should do me just fine for right now. So then I want to also create the output layer. Output TF, and that's going to be dense. That's going to have nine units because they're nine labels. Again, that's completely arbitrary. That's just how I happen to prepare my data set. Now, I don't need the input dimensions because the input dimensions can be inferred by the previous one. The input dimensions to the output are the number of units of the hidden. So I don't need that, but I do need to specify an activation function. And guess what? I am going to use a different activation function. Softmax. So I'm just going to type that in right now. I will come back and explain what Softmax is in a separate video, which I think will be the next video of this series. I'm just going to push this a little bit further. Um, now um, I'm going to say model.add uh, the hidden and then model.add the output. So this is now me. This is now the code for exactly what I diagrammed right here. Three inputs into a hidden layer with some number of units with some activation function into an output layer with some number of units and an activation function. Okay, so we have now built the model. Here's the thing. The next thing that I need to do, and I'm going to do this in the next video, what I need to do is create an optimizer. So let's just put this in comments. Create an optimizer. And I need an optimization function, which typically in the past I've used mean squared error. But I'm going to use something called categorical cross entropy. Ah! I, don't know the, I don't know why. It sounds really scary, but it's not. And I, can't, it's, I also can't spell it. <laughs> so I'm going to create the optimizer. And then I'm going to compile the model. And then I'm going to train the model. These are the next steps that I need to do. This is the architecture for the model. Uh, people are telling me I have an error. Oh yeah, I have some extra, extra comma here. Um, 
Um, but so this is what I'm gonna do in the next video. And so what I need to do in the next video, this is like just a few lines of code, but I need to, I mean, I could just add them, but I would like to try to understand a bit more about what, why I'm, I have softmax here instead of sigmoid or relu or any of the other activation functions and why I might choose categorical cross entropy instead of mean squared error, which is if you have happened to watch my XOR, tensorflow.js coding challenge or some of my other layers, uh, tutorials, um, I, I always just use mean squared error. So that's what's coming in the next video. I'm going to create the optimizer, I'm gonna compile the model, and I'm gonna talk about softmax and categorical cross entropy. Oh wait, 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 wait. Let's actually run this and see if there's any syntax errors. <laughs> No, okay, uh, and if I just say, if I, if I look in the console here at model, we can see there it is. Um, this is the object and it's got all this stuff in it. All right, see you in the next video.